The master plan is important to the city because we haven't had one in years and years and years. So how do we know what to do, where to go, what needs to be done, or maybe we need to be focusing on our energies on something else. If some of you have gone to these meetings, you would be informed about a lot of things that are going on in different parts of the city. Now for the 8th Ward, we have a very large residential makeup in our community. We have production centers right around Van Slyke and it's close to the interstate, and plus also the addition of Powers High School, which are a lot of good assets. But we need to continue to keep that going. And with our population going from 200,000 in the good old days uh, to now facing maybe 80,000 in the upcoming years, we need to know what to do to make the city of Flint a place that people want to come to, a place that people want to stay. And we need to have a plan, because how can we go after monies if we can't show what we're working for? You know, we need to show, we know our business, we know what's to be done, we have a lot of stakeholders that are involved in forming this. We only have maybe less than two weeks or so before it actually goes before City Council for adoption. So if you have not acquainted yourself with the master plan, please make contact with City Hall. Go see what's going on in your area. Uh, you'll be surprised, and there may be some things you don't agree. Maybe they overlook something. They are open to your suggestion. So take this time now, because it's gonna take us a while to make things happen. But it's because of you, we need to be successful in the direction that we are going. Thank you. Yes, a master plan to me is of paramount importance. But I divorced myself from me making a decision on if we should have this master plan or not. But one thing I can expound on is the discrepancies that's in this plan, something that I'm not gonna have the opportunity to vote on. For one thing, this plan does not speak about public safety. It does not speak about sustainability of homes. It speaks about things that's lowering the population, but it has no optimism to it. And what I mean by optimism to it, it's not a plan that will bring people back because this is what we want. We want to bring investors here. We want to have investors here that would invest into our city and bring people back and have a good, safe living here in this city as opposed to 100,000 because as time goes on, the population is going to get smaller and smaller. And this plan does not identify nor gives any detailed look on expanding it and possibly getting it back to 200,000 people. Hypothetically speaking, if somebody invested $1 billion into our city, people would be on I-75, I-69 coming back, but where would they live? We would have nowhere for them. We have to draw a preventive measurement in order to know that if people want to come back, we got somewhere for them to live, as opposed to not having nowhere for them to live at all. I'm not going to be able to vote on this plan, but somebody else will vote on this plan. So I'm for whatever the people want. I just want to be able to explain to you about these discrepancies. It doesn't speak about the eight murders that goes on in our community, which we just had in one week, and six was in my ward. And nobody has drawn a preventive measurement to try to bring some resolution to it, nor even try to prevent it from occurring again. This is the issue I want to speak about, about the eight murders and six in my ward that nobody is speaking nothing about. Kids is killing themselves every day and they've lost the value of human life. There's nothing in there that speaks about bringing the value, bringing the morals back into the children's minds to happen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You know what, you must have looked at my next question. Because we have to talk about safety and that's what you just brought up. Because you can't walk through the city without thinking about safety. We're the murder capital, we're the most violent city in the nation, and when you Google Flint, the, the stats that come up talk about murder, rape, robbery, arson, and assault. So, there was a millage passed, and we're going to start with on this Galloway. There was a millage passed to put more police officers on the street. How would you propose ensuring that public safety millage funds are spent solely on public safety? Not uniforms, not bells, not whistles, but on increasing the number of police on the streets. Um, I sat down with um, Jerry Ambrose and Antonio Brown on last week and asked them to share with me their 
plan for adding more police officers. And for some of you that, that don't know, some of the millage dollars that were supposed to put police officers on the street are put into what you might call a savings account. And it's a savings account for 2014, 2015, because there is the possibility that a grant renewal may not go through. Now this challenged me because what I shared with him is I understand having a plan, because you need a plan. But when we are considered for the third year in a row the worst place to live because of the violence in our city, we don't have time to save money for two years from now. How do you look at a mother who lost her son or her daughter because there wasn't the response from the police officers today telling her, well, we need to prepare for 2015. If we're going to bring more businesses in our city, we have to show ourselves sound and safety today so that they will come today and then in 2015 we may not have to worry about that but of course in the millage what we didn't realize that I learned on Thursday is that as long as they can show that they spent 55 percent between police officers and firefighters they were doing their check and balance is what his words were. We have a check and balance, a way to hold ourselves accountable to the, the voters. And as long as we spend 55% between the police officers and the firefighters, we've met our duty. So that's what they've done. If you want to see something different, you've got to make your voice heard. They're saving for 2015. If that's not good enough for you people, we have to speak. But I'm just as appalled as you are. Gentlemen, forgive me. I'm, I'm struggling because those who have known me in the past know Take the I mic. do my best talking when I'm standing on my feet. Hold the mic. Oh, they really do. Oh, they get it, Alex. Here are the facts, folks. Less than a year ago, we voted Use the for mic. a village. We voted, aren't we, Paul? Use the mic. You really can't hear me, huh? There we go. Less than a year ago, we voted for a millage. On that, uh, that millage request, it said in the first year, the allocation will be $5.3 million. The fact of it is, probably two months after that millage approval, uh, neighborhood meeting, the EFM, the emergency manager, Mr. Brown, I asked him specifically, what's the plan for public safety and the expenditure of the public safety millage? Mr. Brown said, well, we're going to hire 10 police officers uh, this year. And I said, well, is that we're going to hire 10 and 12 or 15 retire? So loss uh, attrition, we'll have a, a net loss? No, no, he said. Net gain of 10 officers. Well, here's the dirty little secret, ladies and gentlemen. As of right now, we have less police and firefighters, less personnel in those critical departments than we had a year ago when that millage was approved. The fact of it is, they've tucked that money under the mattress. They've decided they'll put it in what they call the pool cash fund. And that's an outrage. There's no way, if I'm sitting on that city council, that I'm gonna allow an EFM or an administration of any kind to fool, to hoodwink, to miss the mistrust that that initiates in our community when people of goodwill vote overwhelmingly, almost two-thirds, and said we need these police officers, we need these resources, critical resources for our fire department, and we don't have them. That has to come Mr. to an end. Mr. Harris. Make sure it does happen. Thank you. 